Hello, in this video I will demonstrate the capabilities of BOM Plus module from CAD Plus toolset, allowing you to manage non-model items in SOLIDWORKS documents. Let's start by creating new assembly instruction item in the items library of BOM Plus. Let's navigate to Tools, CAD Plus, BOM Plus, Items Library Manager. By default, library is empty, so we can go ahead and create new item. We need to specify item name. And we can also define multiple configurations. So that would be similar to your SOLIDWORKS file, where a single file item could have multiple configurations with different parameters. Let's now create a few configurations which will correspond to different types of our industry robot arm. We can specify properties on the file level, or we can also override them in the configuration or inherit them. So in this case, I want to specify part number to be different in each configuration and to be equal to AE assembly instructions followed by the part number of the corresponding industry robot arm model. We can also add any additional custom properties. So let's add the properties which contains the number of pages of these assembly instructions. In this case, we're going to specify 24 for those two types and 26 for the last type. I'm going to leave quantity formula box as is for now and going to explain how to use it later in the video. As your library grows, you might want to assign icons and preview to easily navigate and differentiate your items. We can also attach items to different entities in SOLIDWORKS. For that, you can define the filter. I'm going to show you how to use it later in the video. Now let's add the logo to our item. So I already have an image, so I'm just going to browse it. Let's now save our file to commit all the changes. Finally, let's rename our file to give it some user-friendly name. Once completed, we just need to reload our library to see the changes. So as you can see, now we have a single item in our items library. So let's insert this item into our model. So you can see you can browse through three configurations which we have specified. You can see the preview and also the properties are displayed in the properties group. When we click green tick, item is inserted. And I should note that item is inserted into the different tree, so it's not resides in the standard SOLIDWORKS tree. But you can also edit this item, similar to standard SOLIDWORKS features, you can suppress it or remove it. This item will be displayed in the Bill of Materials viewer from BOM Plus. So as you can see, if we scroll down, you can find that item in the tree. We can hover the mouse to see the preview. And all the properties are displayed in the Bill of Materials columns. BOM Plus allows you to manage different types of items, so it's a good idea to categorize those. In order to add a category, you simply need to create a new folder in your Windows Explorer, and you can paste your file in there. Subfolders are also allowed. You can also assign an icon for your category. For that, you need to create an image file and name it icon.png. I will paste icon for my document and rename that file to icon.png. Now I can update my library. And as you can see, there is a documents category and the icon is assigned to that category and all the items within that category inherit this icon unless explicitly overridden. Let's continue our demonstration and add another type of item. Components of this assembly transported in the boxes and the boxes are purchased, so there is no need to model that in SOLIDWORKS. I'm rather going to use items with the specified configurations to indicate which box should be used with that particular component. So I have created the boxes category, and I'm just going to create a new BOM item, which is metal box. I need to double click on that to open the editor. There are multiple predefined sizes of this box available for purchase, so I'm just going to create different categories which correspond to different sizes of the box. I'm also going to add three custom properties which corresponds to width, height and length of the box. And I'm going to fill the data accordingly. Of course, there might be different data you want to put into these custom properties, such as vendor ID, cost, material, etc. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. As this is a metal box, I'm just going to assign a different icon so it overrides the icon of my category, which is cardboard box. So I have selected icon file, and now I can save it and update my library. 
Now let's quickly calculate the bounding box of this assembly in order to insert the appropriate size of the box. So I'm just going to use standard SOLIDWORKS feature to insert bounding box and can look up the size in the configuration specific custom properties. We can now insert an item and find the closest box which could fit that model. So we can select item from the tree, select the configuration of 400 by 300 by 250 and click green tick. Similar to previous steps, our box item is inserted into our tree. Let's continue and add another type of item. And now I'm just going to insert the paint item and I'm going to paint this particular part model. I'm going to approximate the amount of paint required for this part and I'm just going to associate that with the total surface area of this document. So let me create a new category here called paints. I will insert new item which will correspond to my paint. I'm just going to name the file after the code of my paint which is pex02. Now let's activate that in order to define the properties. I will correspond colors to the configuration names. It will be the same part number across all configurations, so I can define the part number on the file level and inherit those in all configurations. As the amount of paint depends on the total area of my selected body, I can use the formula to calculate that amount. I will be using area placeholder multiplied by the factor of 1.5. This will enable the dynamic calculation of the quantity depending on the attached entity and display that in the bill of materials. There are more placeholders you can use to calculate the dynamic quantity. This includes area, volume, diameter and length. Paint item will need to be attached to entity, so we can define the filter of what entities are supported. So in our case it's going to be solid body, surface body or any face. Now we can save our item. I'm also going to add icon for my category. So I'm just going to place image file and rename it to icon.png. Let's reload our library in SOLIDWORKS and insert paint item into the model. Tools, cut plus, insert item, browse item from the tree. And I now need to specify the entity I want to attach it to. In our case, I want to attach to the full solid body. As you can see, it appears in the selection box. Now we can click green tick. I have inserted items on the different levels, including sub assembly and parts. Let's activate the top assembly and show bill of materials. Let's click expand all. And as you can see, all of our items are displayed correctly in the top level bill of materials and you can see the quantity for our paint is calculated based on the surface area of our solid body. We can modify item definitions in our library at any time. So let's change metal box item and add a new property called material. We will set the value of this property to steel and inherit this value in all configuration. Let's add another property called description and specify the value in the box. After that we can save our document and reload items. Let's activate bill of materials, expand and as you can see now the custom properties from that item are displayed in the bill of materials. So description and material properties are filled. We can also hover our mouse over the items to see the preview. Finally, we can export the bill of materials to different formats, such as XML, CSV, Excel or JSON. We can use similar techniques to replace hardware components with lightweight metadata, still preserving the accurate bill of materials. In some cases, the hardware components in the assembly may contribute to 90 or more percent of the total size of your assembly. This has a significant impact on the performance. But sometimes you only insert those components in the assembly to have them listed in the bill of materials. Now let me demonstrate you an alternative way of using hardware components using BOM Plus module of CAD Plus toolset. This oval head screw available in two configurations in this assembly. Let me activate the properties window and find the location of that file. Let me copy that location into my clipboard. 
Let's activate that component in its own window and explore custom properties. As you can see, there are multiple configurations and multiple custom properties available in this document, and those are important information to be displayed in our bill of materials. For this particular project, I only require the list of all my hardware components required for this assembly. But inserting the real geometry parts seems to be an overkill, and lightweight metadata will serve the purpose. I'm going to create new category hardware and subcategory screws, and just create a new item in there. I'm just going to call it oval head. Let's activate the item and modify its definition. I can now fill the properties and configuration as I did in previous video, but instead I'm going to import them directly from SolidWorks part document. I will specify the path to my part and click open, and as you can see, all the configuration properties and previews have been loaded into my item. I can remove the icon, and I can also specify the filter, I'm just going to use circular face and circular edge as filter values. Now I can remove a couple of configurations which I do not need, so default and preview configurations can be deleted. Let's save changes in our item, and as a last step I'm going to specify the icon for our screw subcategory and icon for my hardware category. After loading the libraries, our categories are displayed in the library manager. Let me now suppress hardware components in the assembly all the hardware components in the folder called hardware, and I'm also going to suppress local and mirrored pattern in this assembly. So now there is no hardware components in this assembly. Let's activate insert item property manager page and insert items into the corresponding holes. So I'll select oval head, I'm going to pin my property manager page, and there are two configurations. So let's insert first configuration. As I'm going to insert multiple hardware at the same time, I can use multi-insert property manager page selection box. It will allow me to insert the same item multiple times. So as you can see, it says that 14 items have been inserted. Let's change configuration, clear our selection box, and select another holes, which are going to insert different configuration of this oval head screw. Let's click green tick. Now there are 12 items inserted. Let's close this property manager page, and activate the Items Manager tab. Items are grouped by definition, and we can explore individual instances. As you can see, callout is displayed, and the corresponding hole is highlighted. Now we can display bill of materials and make sure that the hardware components appear in there. So they are in our list, and you can hover the mouse to see the preview. We can continue with this technique and replace all other hardware components. I have already done that, so I'm just going to fast forward the video to save time. Let's display bill of materials and inspect the result. I'm going to expand all of my items, and as you can see, there are more hardware components now available in this bill of materials. We can use different BOM template to show items only. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information about advanced BOM management using CAD+. If I bring the snapshot from our original solvers assembly, you can see that both bill of materials contain the same information about our hardware components. Thank you for watching this video.